Hello and welcome to another episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at Adobe Muse and how to create one of those scrolling window effects. Now you probably have seen these on sites, uh, especially commercial sites or advertising products or event sites and they're kind of cool. So let me show you an example of one. It's actually for the Creative Jam website. Uh, this is at invite.com slash creative jam. But anyway, you'll notice that uh, they've done a nice job even using uh, triangles here. But there's the San Francisco skyline in the background and some information about the event. But when we scroll down, uh, the menu drops down. But if we keep scrolling, we get another window that shows us, in this case, a video. But it shows us something else in the background. If we keep scrolling, uh, we get another window that kind of changes the image again. We keep scrolling, we get another window, we keep scrolling, we get back to the city skyline. So that's what I mean by a scrolling window effect. The content is scrolling over images that are changing in the background. And you can actually do this in Muse um, a couple of different ways. We're going to use scroll effects, but it doesn't even require scroll effects. It's really just more of a layering thing, and I'll show you how to do it. So rather than talk about it, let's dive right in. I'm going to head back over to Adobe Muse. And I'm going to start where you would be starting just for this uh, example. I'm just going to, I could go to create and I'm going to go ahead and say create a new site or just file new site. Uh, when I create the new site, it's going to ask me things about the site. And, and again, normally I would just accept the defaults, but we are going to change some things here because we want our page to be nice and long so we can scroll it. So I'm going to change it, the minimum height from 500 to 6,000. So make a nice long page. I'm also going to give myself some columns to align things with. And I'm going to change the resolution for high DPI displays. I, I just like to make my sites um, compatible with high DPI and retina displays. All right, so that's pretty much it for uh, the changes here. 6,000 minimum height, five columns, high DPI, click OK. And that's going to give you your one page, nice long page site. So let's uh, go ahead and open up the home page. And on the home page, which by the way, there's a new feature in Muse. If you double click the hand tool, that will show you your nice long 6,000 pixel long page. And what we're going to do here is we're going to also work in layers. Let me go back up to the top and we're going to go to the layers menu. And in the layers menu, I'm going to uh, say that this first layer is going to be the slideshow layer. Slideshow. Okay, on the slide, on, sorry, on the slideshow layer, what we're going to do is, you guessed it, put a slideshow. Uh, so let's go to our widget library. And in our widget library, we're gonna go ahead and go to slideshows and we're gonna pull out a full screen slideshow. That's what makes this cool so that no matter how wide the window is or how big the person's display is, they see a nice big image in the background. So let's go to full screen and we'll just go ahead and drag one out. And of course, we want to configure it. Now, this full screen slideshow does create sample content. As soon as you place your content in, it will wipe out the sample content. Or now with a new Muse feature, you can just right click and say clear widget contents. Get rid of all the stuff, the sample images that are in it. The next thing I want to do is I'll go back to the settings and I want to turn off some things. I don't want it to autoplay because then it will just be playing in the background at random and I won't be able to control the image. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to change the transition. I don't want to do a horizontal wipe. I just want to do a fade and I want it to happen very quickly. So in other words, uh, no transition, just pop in, just change uh, to the next image. Uh, the next thing, I don't need all these navigation controls. I don't need a counter. I don't need any of that. I just want my full screen slideshow to change in the background with no transition, just do it. Now, of course, I need the content. So let's go to the little folder at the top. Let's click and let's go get our content. Uh, I've got some slideshow images here. And I'm going to use two, uh, actually, two, three, and four. And um, with those images, I'm just going to go ahead and open and it will place them on the page. Now, of course, I want to verify that they're in the right order. So to do that, I'm going to temporarily turn on the thumbnails so that I can see what order they're in. And just as I, I, I guessed, they're in the wrong order. I want technology first and I want um, nightlife last. So I'm just going to pull this down in order to make it the last one. 
So now I have my three slides that will play in the background. And don't worry, this is going to look very bad because what it's trying to do is show you the, the, the first image or the image you have selected 6,000 pixels tall. So it won't do that in real life. It won't do that on the actual site. It's just the way Muse defaults when it shows you um, uh, a full screen slideshow. So the, even though you can't even see the image, you will see it uh, when, we're, when we're done. So let's go ahead and just simply turn back off the thumbnails. We use the thumbnails for what we want it. We're done with the slideshow. At that point, now we can go ahead and work on the next um, layer. So let's go ahead and go back to our layers panel. In our layers panel, we're going to create a new layer. And this new layer is going to be our window or windows. Windows. So that's our new layer that's going to be on top of the slideshow. So this is going to be where the window content is. Now we're just going to go ahead and drag out a, uh, a rectangle to be our first window. I'm just going to go ahead and make it the full screen here. It's on the window layer. You can um, have it go down. And I made it 100% width. In other words, I'm touching both sides so that it will scale out to the full width of the browser. Now you can fill it with whatever you want. You want to fill it with a color, you want to fill it with a pattern, you want to fill it with an image, you want to fill it with whatever you want. It is now filled uh, with white in my case. But you can fill it with whatever your design uh, taste require. So now that I've got that window, um, Let's go ahead and scroll a little bit. Let's make it a little bit taller so it fills up the whole screen. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to duplicate it down the page. In other words, I want these windows to be gaps in. I want gaps in that will actually be the windows, but these panels will cover up the slideshow when I don't want you to see the slide. Um, so let's go in and let's uh, double click the hand tool again. And that will show me my nice long slideshow. And again, of course, you're only seeing one image, so it looks weird, but that's okay. So now I'm just going to select the white rectangle, hold down my option or alt key so that I can duplicate it and just simply drag it down. And again, give yourself whatever space you think you need to see in the window itself. So that's the image they will see. And again, let go, hold down the option key again and drag down again. So you can space these out and it will give you smart guys to let you know when they're spaced out evenly or you can space them out non-evenly, however you want to do it. But there, um, there's my window. Now I may come back and adjust these and move them down further. I think I will do that now just to get some of this out of the way. There we go. And now I've got, um, and oops, let's go ahead and get this one down as well. There we go. So now I've got them nicely spaced apart. Now, at this point, what would happen if I were to preview this is you would see a white panel and you would see the first slide and you'd see a white panel and you see the first slide and you see a white panel because nothing would change. There's one more thing we need to do to make the slideshow actually change in between these windows. So let's, uh, let's turn off the window layer uh, and then just simply select the slideshow. And what we want to do is we, this is where the scroll effects come in. So what I want to do for scroll effects, remember we turned off the autoplay for the slideshow. So it's just sitting there. It's not going to know to advance until, and, and there's no navigation. So it's just going to sit there on slide one. We want it to um, advance when someone scrolls down the page. So I'm going to go to my scroll effects where I have opacity and third panel is slideshow. And I want to say, yes, I want this, uh, I want scroll effects to control this slideshow. I don't want it to autoplay. I want it to be affected when some every 2,000 pixels. So when someone scrolls down 2,000 pixels, change slides. So now, that's how the scroll effect would work. So let, we can test it to see where we are so far. So I can turn back on the window layer and we can say preview page in browser and that will generate the HTML and show me this page in my default browser. And here we are, again, just a big white panel, the white rectangle, and if we scroll, we start to see the first slide. Awesome. We get another panel, we scroll, and we see the next slide. Awesome. We get another panel, we scroll. Oh, now see how it's changing before we finish scrolling? That means that we're not giving it enough pixels before it changes. So we need to increase that 2,000 to something higher. Okay, and there we go. So, changes. 
changes. And of course, this is going to be also dependent on the resolution of your display. I'm at 1920 by 1080. So it's got a longer scroll thing that we can see more of the image before it happens. And we want to accommodate for typically what's going to be on the largest display that someone would be looking at this on. So again, I'm going to go back to the uh, select the slideshow, go back to scroll effects. And with the slideshow selected, there we go. Well, let's change this to maybe 2300. And again, this is all guessing depending on resolutions and screen sizes and so forth. So let's go on and preview page and browser one more time. It'll generate the HTML, show us the page in the browser. And as we scroll, we see our slide. Great. And we shouldn't see it change until the next slide. Oh. Now see, 2300 might be a little too much because now it's not scrolling here until we go higher. Or the other thing you can do is simply make your panels longer. So if we make this panel longer so we don't see it, you know, take as long to change, we can do that as well. So now let's try that again. So you can either control it either way, either by changing the value for the scroll effect or simply making the panels longer or shorter so that you don't see it when it changes. Because these are just covering up that slideshow in the background. And see, now I don't see it because the panel is long enough to where it's happening behind the scenes and I don't see the change. I saw it that time. So need to make that panel just a little longer. There we go. And there we are. All right, so, um, or make, you know, or make your adjustment to the slideshow itself. So I can either do this and then come back to the slideshow and change that to maybe 2,500 or 2,400. Let's try that. Uh, one more time, preview page and browser. And I'm also running out of space on the bottom of that page. So 6,000 might be too short for the page length. Might want to make it longer. Okay, don't see any change. Boom, we're on a new image. Don't see any change. And see that one is now taking too long. So you get the idea. We'll tweak it. And we'll go. I think we should go back to the 2300 for this. Select the slideshow. 2300 I think was enough. And we just need to adjust that last panel so that that last panel is longer so that we don't see uh, that change happen. All right, so one last time. Preview page and browser. I think the 2300 was the sweet spot and then we'll go down see it yes see it yes see it yes okay and we need to make our page longer so that we actually get more of that last slide all right so to make your page longer all we would do is just go to the page properties and maybe change the page width or length i'm sorry to maybe 60 i don't know 6500 to make that page a little longer and one more time, preview page and browser. This will be the last time we're going to go in. Even if we don't get it perfect, you get the idea of what you need to tweak. And we'll go on to the last steps. Okay, so again, great. Great. And great. Okay, that was what it was. That's what it needed. So 6,500 pixel page lo uh, long and 2,300 pixels uh, on the scroll effect to change the slide every 2300 pixels. Okay, so now we can continue designing. So let's go back to uh, double click the zoom tool to zoom up to 100%. And now we want to do a couple of things. We want to go in and put something on our panels. We don't want to just see white. So rather than you watch me type and lay things out, uh, I took advantage of the library feature here in, in uh, Muse. I'm just going to go ahead and drag out what I want on panel one. See how much easier that is and how much less painful that is than to watch me type this stuff. All right, panel two. And panel three. There we go. All right, so now we have something on each panel. And the next thing we want to do is I love the fact on the Creative Jam website that once a person starts scrolling or they get down far enough, the menu drops down. Because when you're no longer at the top of the page and you don't have that initial view, you, you might want to either jump back up to the top of the page or 
scroll down to other pages. So let's create that. Let's do one more layer. And let's do, um, we'll call this one nav, because that's what it's going to be, our navigation layer. And on our navigation layer, this is where we're going to create all the content that's going to stay at the top of the page, but only appear when we want to see it. So to do this, we're going to uh, just create a rectangle. This is what our navigation bar would look like. And again, I'm going to make it 100% width. And uh, fill it with whatever you want, color, pattern, picture, whatever you want. I'm going to fill it with a nice uh, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. So how about a nice green? And um, now I want to pin it to the top so it doesn't move once it appears. I don't want it to scroll off the page. And uh, now I want to control how it moves or how it appears. Uh, to do that, we're going to do scroll effects and we're going to do instead of we're not doing a slideshow this time, we're going to do opacity. Um, I tried doing it with movement, having it move onto the page. and I just couldn't get it to look the way I wanted it to look. And then I tried opacity and it was exactly what I wanted. So let's do opacity. And um, what we want to happen here, the way opacity works is it gives you three triggers uh, or, and, and, or three keys, I should say. And they're, they're above the page right now, so that's why we don't see them. Uh, but it gives me one starting one, one middle one, and one ending one. Fade position, fade position one, key position, and fade position two. And what I want to happen is, it, no, the, way, the way this is set up is it would start out at zero, fade up to 100, and then fade out again. Well, I don't want it to fade out. And I don't want it to, um, to, oh, I want it to fade in and I want it to stay there. So let's go 20 pixels and we will do uh, zero fade, you know, start at zero, fade up 20, uh, once you scroll down 20 pixels, straight, fade up to 100. And then again, once it's at 20 pixels, stay at 100. So all we're doing is we're saying at 20 pixels, nothing, scroll down 20 pixels, uh, fade in at 100, and then at 20 pixels, and once you scroll past that, stay there. So this is the way it would look. File, page, pre or preview page and browser. Generates all this wonderful HTML for us. Shows it to us in the browser. And again, we don't see our bar because we haven't scrolled yet, but once we scroll, it appears and stays there. And once we scroll up, it disappears. So that's how we get that menu to drop down or look like it's dropping down when really all it's doing is just changing the opacity and appearing. And because it's on a layer above and pinned to the top, it stays above the content and the content continues to scroll under it. So that's working. Now we need some actual menu items and we need to control how this is going to work. So again, taking advantage of the libraries in, in Muse, I've got some menu names I'm just going to drag on. And we want to put them on the right layer. Let's do that. Move them up to the top layer there. Great. And we can put them anywhere we want. So we'll put them right there. And um, now these are, are same thing. We want to pin them so they don't scroll off the page. And the next thing we want to do is we want to, uh, we can do, let's see, can I do the scroll effects all at once? I don't know. I've never tried this. Let's do the opacity. Yeah, I can't do this. Okay, 20. We're just setting the same values that we did for the bar. And 100. Okay, so now those will stay in place um, and not move and it will appear, appear just like the other ones. But now we need to actually control what they do. So uh, home is what, so of course, someone clicks or taps and it go, scrolls back up to the top of the page. So how do I tell it to scroll to the top of the page? And by the way, these aren't a menu. These aren't using the menu widget Muse. These are just text, just four different text boxes. So I want to turn it into a menu item by using the anchor feature. I'm just going to go ahead and click an anchor, and we put the anchor anywhere we want near the top of the page, and we're just going to call that anchor home. All right. Now, I don't really have a technology section, so I want you to scroll down here to get to the technology uh, page or or. or I should call it uh, picture, and we'll call this one tech. And of course, just short for technology. Next one, uh, we can get down here and we can say explore. And last but not least, 
nightlife. And same thing here. Another anchor, night. Okay, so now that we have our four anchors, all we do is tie them into our menu, or our fake menu. Uh, let's go ahead and just say that this one's going to be home. This one is going to be explore, or technology. This one is going to be explore. So we're just linking these text boxes to their respective anchors. And night. Great. All right, so now let's test it all and see if I did this correctly. Hopefully I didn't miss any steps, but let's see. Preview page and browser. Generates all that wonderful HTML for us. And again, you design this any way you want. Just giving you the concept here. We can scroll. Great. The menu appears. Stays there. Stays in the right. And we can jump around. We can jump back to technology. We can jump to explore. We can jump to nightlife. And we can jump back home. There you have it. That's how to create a scrolling window effect. Now, there's one more thing. What if you want it? that kind of like they did on the Creative Jam site, that, those triangles. You can't draw those kinds of shapes in Muse directly, but what you could do is create the shape and fill a rectangle with the shape. So fill a rectangle with the image, and that way you'd get those nice different shapes, triangles, circles, whatever you want, and you can use those as your window or your panels for your window on your Windows layer. So that's it for this episode. Hope you learned something. Thanks again for watching. My name is Terry White. Take care.